In today's video, I'm excited to take you behind the scenes of our short film Decent and walk you through the process of creating some captivating shots. If you haven't had the chance to watch the short film yet, no worries. I've included a link in the description for you to check it out. And for those who might not be familiar with Florent Lebrun's incredible body of work, I've also provided some links below. His artistry is something you definitely don't want to miss. Feel free to jump to the shot that is the most interesting to you by using the chapters. Let's jump right in. The first shot I'm gonna talk about was quite simple to do. Florent already had an idea about the look. Like that alien opening. Simple read, large and slow pan. After a quick shading into cycle, I've rendered the planet into a big 12k image to matte paint some detailed clouds in Photoshop. I won't take too much time to explain what I've did in Photoshop, but very briefly, I've gathered some cool references and tried to make them match my rendering to have a pleasing and very detailed matte painting. After that, I've imported the matte painting into After Effects and since the shot has almost no parallax, it was just a matter of animate the planet from left to right and doing the same thing for the position of the spaceship and exporting different variation to find the right timing and the correct speed for the camera. Real-time rendering is really something that increases your artistry, I feel. And the fact that we can use that inside Blender, where you can keep all your textures and trick everything on the fly, is just amazing. For the entire design, I used a single flat texture. I've gathered some cool references images in Photoshop and used that as a base for modeling. Having all the textures in one PNG allows me to explore more easily. So. I needed some visual noise around the screen, but since that screen is the focus point, I worked more on the UE design itself. We wanted something from the 80s, so I thought going over the top would be nice. And by saying over the top, I mean that it needed to feel busy. I started to throw some random gadgets, alert messages, numbers that are scrolling randomly like there is some calculation going in the computer. Some quick tricks like recording viewport rendering of the planet or rendering a wireframe turnaround of the ship worked well. For the rest, it was all done in After Effects, with expression animation mostly. I wanted to give a better sensation of dive in that huge bit without bottom. The trails, how I pictured it, would help give that speed sensation but also draw the ship trajectory visually, which in that case helped a lot to understand also the movement. I must admit that the basic quick smoke inside Blender did the trick pretty well. After a few tests, I quickly came up with a nice look for the trail at the back of the spaceship. I really encourage you to check online because there's a ton of videos about quick smoke. But for my setup, I just use the sphere as an emitter, apply the quick smoke, play it a little bit with the setup, and found something cool to work with. The reason why I've added the wind force is because I didn't make the spaceship moving in the environment, but I made the environment moving instead of the spaceship. Sometimes, it's more simple to animate the entire environment instead of the spaceship itself because if you want to animate stuff on the spaceship, you're gonna have a very hard time tracking the spaceship into the 3D space every time you move the timeline. The other particle were added to increase that sensation of speed. Since the background is huge, it was not that noticeable that the ship is moving. A simple cube with a principal volume shader and an animated noise did the job. When it came to certain shots, I mixed and matched different render engines to optimize our workflow. For those trails you see throughout the scene, I employed Blender Quick Smoke feature, which proved again to be an excellent tool for generating those atmospheric effects. Additionally, to add an extra layer of depth, I seamlessly integrated video stock footage into the mix, 
enhancing the overall visual experience. This shot served as a pivotal link between Florence wide-angle camera sequence and the VDB blast shot. Both shots posed a challenge, with the spotlight on VDBs, of course. When I initially experimented with EV for rendering, I encountered limitations in terms of bounce lights and precision, leading me to turn to cycle for more demanding tasks. To tackle this, I adopted the segmented rendering approach, the ground, primarily covered by the VDB, was rendered with 100 samples. The spaceship, when rendered solo, could suffice with a swift of 500 samples. The background, where fine details weren't crucial, found a perfect fit in EV. The VDB itself required more time due to its complexity. With 100 samples, I got the desired result. And finally, for the VDB's ground shadow, 50 samples was enough essential for avoiding old VDB appearance afterward. Rendering everything together at 500 samples would have considerably increased the rendering time. As a final touch, I introduced dust footage particles in After Effects, incorporating motion blur and additional dust particles through the footage. This particular shot was the most technically demanding segment of the entire short film. The star of the show here was the VDB sequence again, crafted using Umbergen. If you are seeking realistic VDBs, I'm not kidding when I say you should absolutely explore this fantastic software. Within just 10 minutes, you will grasp its workings, and the real-time rendering capabilities are truly mind-bending. After importing a low-poly version of the ship animation, I started having fun in Embergen. After exporting that huge VDB sequence, I started rendering it in Blender. After 9 long hours, it finished eventually. I employed the same meticulous staging method as the previous shot, maximizing control and post-processing flexibility. Finally, I've gathered everything in After Effects and added the final touches. I needed more energy in the shot, so I've injected some heat distortion with the displacement map. Particles footage play their role too, even if it's subtle. It makes the sequence feel more real. Every project's conclusion prompts me to reflect on the lesson learned throughout the journey. What stands out is that regardless of the initial shot or concept, each one presents unique challenges that demand a fresh perspective. I enjoy these challenges, they push me to think outside the box and to evolve as an artist. If you enjoyed the insights and behind the scenes look in this video, don't hesitate to leave a comment to share your thoughts. A like would also be greatly appreciated, and if you found the content valuable and think it could benefit others, Feel free to share the video with your friends and fellow artists.